Hello, and welcome to Spaceflight Histories, a channel dedicated to telling the history of space exploration. Today, we're looking at five fun facts about Gemini 3, the first manned flight of the Gemini program. The mission's command pilot was Gus Grissom, the second American to fly in space and veteran of Mercury Redstone 4. The pilot was rookie John Young, the first from NASA's second group of astronauts, the New 9, to fly in space. The crew's backup astronauts were Wally Schirra and Tom Stafford, the future prime crew of Gemini 6A. Let's take a look at five interesting facts about Gemini 3. 1. Gemini 3's capsule was named Molly Brown. Naming aircraft is a long-standing and loved tradition in aviation. Spirit of St. Louis, Enola Gay, and Glamorous Glennis, just to name a few of the most famous. The Mercury astronauts, all of whom were military pilots, carried this tradition into space by naming their capsules. Freedom, Liberty Bell, Friendship, Aurora, Sigma, and Faith, and Delta, seven. The seven tacked onto each to pay homage to the Mercury Seven as a whole group. Project Gemini, NASA's second manned space program, intended to continue this practice. According to the book Calculated Risk, The Supersonic Life and Times of Gus Grissom by George Leopold, Gus Grissom first considered naming his Gemini spacecraft Wapasha after several Metawakanton Dakota chiefs who lived in Minnesota during the 18th and 19th centuries. However, after someone pointed out to Grissom that the spacecraft might be nicknamed the Wabash Cannonball after a mythical train described in the American folk song of the same name, Wapasha was dropped. Grissom and John Young agreed on the name Molly Brown after the popular Broadway show The Unsinkable Molly Brown as a nod to Grissom's sunken Liberty Bell 7 capsule. More on that later. The Unsinkable Molly Brown is about the real-life Margaret Brown, a socialite and philanthropist who survived the sinking of the RMS Titanic in 1912 and helped with the ship's evacuation. A lifelong suffrage and human rights advocate, she also financially backed several elementary schools, helped establish the first juvenile court in the U.S., and earned the French Legion of Honor for her work with the American Committee for Devastated France and the Red Cross during and after World War I. NASA was not amused by this and made the crew choose another name. Grissom suggested Titanic. NASA was less amused by that one, so they reluctantly allowed Molly Brown. In fact, NASA disliked the name so much that it prohibited its astronauts from naming their spacecraft until 1969 with Apollo 9, the first time two manned spacecraft belonging to the same mission flew in space together. Due to Grissom's heavy involvement in the design of the Gemini capsule, other astronauts called it the Gusmobile. Though Gemini 5 was the first crew to wear embroidered patches on their spacesuits, the astronauts of Gemini 3 and Gemini 4 designed their own insignia. Grissom and Young carried silver medallions with artwork of a Gemini capsule in the ocean. The inclusion of the crew's first and last names and middle initials is unique to Gemini 3's and Gemini 4's insignia. Young had physical patches produced for himself sometime post-flight and proudly wore it on his flight suits throughout his career. 2. Gus Grissom was the first person to fly in space twice. On July 21, 1961, Grissom became the second American in space on board the 15-minute suborbital Mercury Redstone 4 mission. Paying homage to the Mercury 7 astronauts and to the United States, Grissom named his spacecraft Liberty Bell 7 because his capsule, in his words, was, quote, shaped like a bell. After splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean, the explosive hatch blew prematurely, causing water to flood into the capsule. Grissom was safely recovered, but Liberty Bell 7, too heavy to hoist, sank to the bottom of the ocean. This event was what inspired the name Molly Brown for the Gemini 3 spacecraft. While Grissom was the first person to fly in space twice, his backup Wally Schirra was the first person to complete two orbital space flights. Alan Shepard, the first American in space, was the original command pilot of Gemini 3, but was grounded in 1963 due to Meniere's disease, an inner ear disorder. He was chief of the astronaut office during the Gemini program. Of the seven Mercury astronauts, five flew in space at least twice. 3. Gemini 3 was the first two-man American space mission. While the Soviet Voskhod 2, launched on March 18, 1965, was the first two-person mission in space history, 
Gemini 3 was the first two-person American space mission. The two-person Project Gemini was approved by NASA in December 1961 as the bridge from the sole pilot Project Mercury to the three-man lunar Project Apollo. All tasks astronauts would perform on their journey to and from the moon were tested and perfected during Gemini, including EVA, rendezvous, docking, and spending extended periods of time in microgravity. Originally called Mercury Mark II, Gemini is named after the constellation of the same name, also the Latin word for twins. Gemini 3 lifted off from Launch Complex 19 on Cape Kennedy on Tuesday, March 23, 1965 at 9.24 a.m. local time. It was the first manned launch of a Titan rocket and the first manned launch from Launch Complex 19. The Titan II Gemini launch vehicle was a two-stage liquid-fuel man-rated launch vehicle derived from the Titan II intercontinental ballistic missile. They were manufactured by Martin, had a height of 109 feet and a diameter of 10 feet, and a payload to low Earth orbit capacity of 7,900 pounds. Its first stage was powered by a single Aerojet LR87 engine with two combustion chambers and nozzles, and the second stage was powered by a single Aerojet LR91 engine. Both engines use Aerozine 50 as fuel and nitrogen tetroxide as oxidizer. Aerozine 50 was developed by Aerojet specifically for the Titan II rocket and was later used by the Apollo Lunar Module. A quirk with the Gemini Titan II was the holes in its fuselage. The rocket's second stage engine burned while the first stage was still attached. According to John Young in a 1998 interview with Smithsonian Magazine, this was called fire in the hole. To prevent the buildup of hot gases, 16 rectangular exhaust ports were located at the forward end of the first stage's fuselage to vent the gas as the LR-91 engine burned. The Gemini Titan II was the only human-rated Titan launch vehicle. Launch Complex 19 was built in the late 1950s to support Titan rocket launches. After 15 Titan I launches from 1959 to 1962, it was converted to support Titan II Gemini launch vehicles, 12 of which, 10 manned and 2 unmanned, launched from 1964 to 1966. The most notable modification was the addition of a white room, an environmentally controlled, well, room, that contained and processed the Gemini spacecraft before liftoff. It sat atop the booster erector and was how astronauts got into the capsule. In spring 1967, the complex was deactivated and mothballed. Its service tower and umbilical were demolished in 1977, and the launch pad was demolished in the early 2010s. Fortunately, the White Room was restored in 2003 and moved to the Air Force Space and Missile Museum, now the Cape Canaveral Space Force Museum, where it still sits. Gemini 3 was also the final mission controlled from Florida instead of Houston, Texas. It and the prior Mercury missions were controlled by the Mercury Control Center on Cape Kennedy Air Force Station. The MCC was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1984 and served as a stop for tourists visiting the Cape until the 1990s. The building, full of asbestos and in poor condition due to decades of exposure to the coast's salty air, was demolished in 2010. Fortunately, the control room consoles were rescued and refurbished and can now be seen in their original configuration at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. The Mission Control Center at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas, monitored Gemini 3 in a backup capacity. Capsule communicators, or CAPCOMs, for Gemini 3 were Mercury veteran Gordon Cooper at the Cape and rookie Roger Chaffee in Houston. There have been a number of two-person missions in American space history beginning with the 10 manned flights of the Gemini program in 1965 and 1966. The first four flights of the space shuttle, STS-1 through STS-4, carried two astronauts each. As of 2025, there have been three American two-person missions in the 2020s. SpaceX Demo-2, the crewed flight test of the SpaceX Crew Dragon, and Boeing Crew Flight Test, the crewed test flight of Boeing Starliner, each had a crew of two. SpaceX Crew-9 was scheduled to transport a crew of four to the International Space Station, but due to technical issues with Starliner, launched with a crew of only two. The Soviet Union conducted a number of two-person missions in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. 4. Gemini 3 
Gemini 3 smuggled a sandwich into space. Off A1A in Cocoa Beach at the Ramada Inn stood Wolfie's Restaurant, a family-friendly joint frequently visited by astronauts. One of Gemini 3's mission objectives was to evaluate NASA's new in-flight food packaging, reconstitution method, and taste. Space food flown on prior Mercury missions came in toothpaste-like tubes and in the form of crumbly, bite-sized cubes. During Gemini, NASA had its astronauts try food cubes coated in gelatin to minimize crumbling and rehydrating food with a water gun. Astronauts did not like the cold, mushy food. Wally Shira, one of Grissom's friends and his backup, got the bright idea to have John Young bring a fresh sandwich on the flight to surprise Gus. Shira purchased a corned beef on rye from Wolfie's, and Young smuggled it in the pocket of his flight suit. About two hours into the flight, Young pulled out the sandwich and presented it to his commander. Grissom took a bite, neither he nor Young expecting the smell to be so pungent. Crumbs and caraway seeds began to fill the cabin, so Grissom shoved the sandwich into his suit pocket. It was a miracle the crumbs didn't interfere with the spacecraft's electronics. And that would have been the end of the story, had no one back on Earth taken notice. This 30-second stunt drew scrutiny from Congress and NASA Administrator James Webb, who felt the Manned Spacecraft Center needed to tighten its reins on its astronauts. George Mueller, the head of the Office of Manned Spaceflight, promised Representative George Shipley, who was especially appalled at the astronauts' antics, that NASA would take steps, quote, to prevent recurrence of corned beef sandwiches in future flights, unquote, while clarifying there was, quote, no detriment to the actual carrying out of the mission because of the ingestion of the sandwich, unquote. Manned Spacecraft Center Director Bob Gilruth was more lenient, telling Congress that humor helps, quote, break up the strain, unquote, of spaceflight. His boss Webb disagreed, stating the stunt, quote, was not an adequate performance by an astronaut, unquote. Remember, this was over a sandwich, and it didn't even have mustard. Neither Grissom, Young, nor Shira, who orchestrated the whole thing to begin with, received any reprimand. Sixty years later, the infamous sandwich is probably what the first manned Gemini mission is most remembered for. True to Mueller's word, no corned beef sandwich ever flew in space again. With one exception. In 1981, when Young commanded his fifth space flight and the first flight of the space shuttle program, space-rated corned beef sandwich cubes were on his menu. 5. Gemini 3 was the first to perform an orbital maneuver. At the end of its first orbit, Gemini 3 became the first manned mission to perform an orbital maneuver. The spacecraft's orbit attitude and maneuvering system engines burned for 1 minute and 14 seconds to lower Gemini 3's orbit from 100 miles by 139 miles to a near circular 97 miles by 105 miles. It burned for a second time 45 minutes later to change the spacecraft's orbital inclination by only 0.02 degrees. Near the end of their third and final orbit, the OIMS fired to lower Gemini 3's perigee to 45 miles, so in the event its retro rockets failed to ignite, the spacecraft would still re-enter the atmosphere. Gemini 3 also evaluated the worldwide tracking network in Gemini spacecraft systems. The manned spaceflight network was a collection of tracking stations located around the world that supported the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and Skylab programs. The Gemini network consisted of 24 sites. Spacecraft Molly Brown is now on display at the Virtual Eye Gus Grissom Memorial Museum in Mitchell, Indiana. Honorable mention, Gemini 3 was recovered by the USS Intrepid. After four hours and 52 minutes in space, Gemini 3 splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean near Grand Turk Island and was recovered by the USS Intrepid. The USS Intrepid, known as the Fighting Eye, was an Essex-class aircraft carrier built during World War II and participated in several campaigns in the Pacific Theater, including the Battle of Leyte Gulf, the largest naval battle of the Second World War. In the 1950s, she was converted to support modern jet aircraft and alternated between operating in the Atlantic Ocean and deploying to the Mediterranean Sea. After refitting as an anti-submarine carrier in the early 1960s, she recovered astronaut Scott Carpenter in 1962. After retrieving Gemini 3 and its crew in 1965, 
the Intrepid served in the Vietnam War in NATO exercises and was decommissioned in March 1974. She was saved from being scrapped and opened as a museum ship, the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum, on the Hudson River in New York City in 1982. The ship was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1986 and served as the FBI Operations Center after the September 11 terrorist attacks. In 1988, the USS Growler, one of only two nuclear-armed conventional diesel-electric submarines, joined Intrepid at Pier 86, and since 2012, the carrier has housed Space Shuttle Enterprise. Grissom and Young flew to Cape Kennedy on March 24th and spent the next week visiting the White House, New York, and Chicago for parades and press conferences. After serving as backup command pilot for Gemini 6A, Gus Grissom was transferred to the Apollo program and assigned as commander of its first manned mission. He and his crewmates Ed White and Roger Chaffee were killed when their spacecraft's cockpit caught fire on the launch pad on January 27, 1967. John Young flew in space another five times, as command pilot of Gemini 10 in 1966, command module pilot of Apollo 10 in 1969, commander of Apollo 16 in 1972, commander of STS-1 in 1981, and commander of STS-9 in 1983. He also served as chief of the astronaut office from 1974 to 1987. Retiring in 2004, Young is the longest serving astronaut in history. In 2010, a replica Gemini Launch Vehicle 3 made from a restored Air Force Titan II missile and a mock-up Gemini capsule was erected at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex's rocket garden. Gemini 3 successfully tested the manned space capability of the Titan II rocket and Gemini spacecraft. It was the jumping off point for the highly ambitious Gemini program. The next mission, Gemini 4, would push the human body to its limits by having an astronaut walk in space. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new today. As always, my sources can be found in my Gemini 3 web article linked in the description. And if you want more space history, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. I've been Erin, and this has been Spaceflight Histories.